Can everyone hear me okay? Minnesota Law School. Um, I contacted Jean about this because both of us last year independently started purchasing laptops for our students. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit today as to why our law schools came up with that decision to go ahead and go that route and some of the things that we've, that we've done through the process. We began purchasing the laptops for our students. The one of the first things that we thought about were the financial concerns. We were getting tons of phone calls. Everyone was wanting to buy a laptop before they came to law school. Even those people who had had, some, had laptops in undergrad, they were, we were still just getting flooded with calls all the time about what sort of hardware they needed to get, what sort of software, etc. cetera. Um, and one of the things I thought, you know, I did the premier thing with Dell, and I did the Gateway store with Gateway, and had that up on our website. But the pricing really was not as competitive as I thought I would be able to get by doing volume purchasing. And just so you know, our incoming class is generally about 150 students per year. So I knew that we could get better pricing for larger volumes. And there's also that sales tax issue in there as well, that because we're purchasing them and leasing them that we don't have to worry about. And we could also ensure that our students were purchasing the appropriate hardware and software. Additionally, there is that issue of exams on computer. Uh, we've been doing that for a few years already, but we always were dealing with the equity concerns about those students who didn't have laptops. We didn't provide laptops for our students because we couldn't provide them for everyone, and we didn't want the kind of liability issues in case something went wrong with someone's laptop in the middle of an exam if it was owned by the law school. So this way we can ensure that everyone had laptops. Also, the curricular advantages. In our research courses now, they know when their students come in and you want to do some Lexis and Westlaw searching, everyone in that room can do it at the same time. Also, just having access to the network storage, access to course assignment pages and handouts for our course pages was also a real advantage for everyone being able to have pervasive computing. One of the reasons that the IT staff really pushed for this, this, this initiative came from us. We're very small staff. At the time, we had two people who were handling everything. And there were very high expectations of, of levels of service. We, if, no matter what your problem was, you could bring it to us and we'd work on it. And if that meant that we had to do a rebuild of your OS, we did a rebuild of your OS, and that would take us a whole day, and we'd do it. Um, we had virus issues like you could not believe. Um, I think Blaster hit us pretty hard, and we did not want to go through that again. We were trying to support every hardware and software configuration. We did draw the line at max, but otherwise, if it was 95, 98 ME, we, we were trying to support it. And exams on computer was a real problem because we were deploying them via floppies, and some people had their external floppy drives that did or did not work, and that was just a real hassle every semester. And we also had a number of students who had come to us and asked us to call Dell or us to call Gateway for them to handle their service repairs because they were not getting a good response and they thought if they could have someone who was knowledgeable on the phone with them that perhaps we could get a quicker response or we could just do the repairs for them ourselves because, you know, they'd send them a hard drive. Well, they don't know how to install a hard drive on a laptop and they don't really have the screwdrivers to do it. Um, and so they were asking us to do that anyway. And a lot of our students were just very, very frustrated with the kind of service they were receiving from the vendors. So beginning the process, the first thing I did was I contacted the dean and said, you know, we've got to do something. Either we're going to have to say we can't provide this kind of service for all of our students anymore, which is not going to go over very well at all, because once you start something like that, you've gone down the road. And the other issue is the budget implications, though, if, if we were to do something like this. And so we need to get a sign-off from main campus on that. And then our technology committee. We have faculty on our committee as well as support staff and, uh, and the IT staff. And trying to get everyone to come together on what they thought would be the right type of system for our students was the first part of the process. We arranged for vendors to visit. We actually just had Dell and Gateway. We had some problems getting in touch with the IBM folks early on, and we were too far down the line in the process, so IBM was not considered at the time. Some things that we knew that we definitely wanted. We wanted the laptops to come in pre-imaged with the software and with our network set up on them already. Um, we wanted to have warranties on them, and I wanted warranties for both 
the accidental coverage and for hardware, and I wanted that for three years, and I wanted it within the next, within 24 hours to get hardware support. We needed fast repair service. I had absolutely no interest in us becoming a mail shop. I did not want to mail off the laptops all the time to get repaired, keep track of which ones were out, which ones were coming back, because I thought that was going to be a big paperwork nightmare. So I did not want to do that. And I wanted the ability for both staff and for our staff and for students to be able to call in with problems. My concern was those students, especially who were going home on vacation or for break, to make sure that they could get their laptops repaired while they were not at the law school. Durability was a concern, as well as weight. You know, there's always some trade-offs as to when you're trying to configure the system as to which one's going to be the best for the greatest number of people. Uh, we had a number of people on our technology committee who were very concerned about weight. And, of course, the vendors knew this, and so they'd come in and they'd pass around their laptop choices, and, of course, they would um, they'd pass around without the batteries on them and things like that. So you'd have to say, excuse me, why don't you put that battery in there, and then we can get the true weight of this. Um, and we'd go ahead and put that CD drive in there as well. So uh, we, you, you had to be careful with them because they, they would try to tailor their, what they had for you, depending upon what you were telling them you really wanted. The configuration that we chose, this is actually for this coming year. Um, we, we, we went with the Dell Latitude D610. We did not want to go with the Inspiron model or anything like that. I think it's best when you're doing something like this to always go with their business class models. Um, and basically, we, we do have the floppy disk drives with them because we are still deploying our exams via floppy. We don't have wireless completely all over the law school yet. And we also have the Intel cards, the DVD drive. We don't have DVD burners, but we have CD burners on them. Um, I, at the point, I was trying to configure a system that I thought would meet the needs of most of our law students for <laughs> law school needs. Um, so I did not think that DVD burners were really necessary for what they needed to do in law school. The software that we put on there is, of course, much less expensive as well um, for the students because we're able to purchase it. Um, so Microsoft Office has a, has a big discount. And also Norton Antivirus we can put on there, and then, of course, we push out their DAT files. And our virus issues for those incoming students just basically went away. Whenever there are issues with spyware, things like that, um, I now know, I have all their MAC addresses and I know what all their computer names are, so I can easily find those students and to take, get them off the network and take care of the problems. So that's been helpful. And the service, again, three-year three next, um, next business day for our parts and labor, and then three-year complete care for any sort of accident if they drop it. Uh, second day of school last year, we had a student who was our Air Force Reserve, and was on some sort of supply cargo plane that he decided to take his laptop on and immediately had like hundreds of pounds of radio equipment fall on it. But called Dell and they said okay. And, and it was funny because on the phone they were like, can we have it back? And I, can you send, just send us back the original? I'm like, why would you want the original back? There's absolutely no reason to get it now. But they did. And then um, Gold Direct Line Technical Support. And I don't know how many of you knew this. I mean, we always bought gold for our systems at the law school. But once they started giving us the reasons why, um, apparently most of their tech support people at Dell are paid by the amount of time they can get you off the phone. So it's in their best interest to get you off the phone as soon as possible. Gold tech support, however, that's not how they're paid. They're paid by the number of times you've called them. So it is in their best interest that you don't call back with the same problem because it's going to cut into their pay. So that was a big concern, and we wanted to make sure we had gold tech support. The budget implications, how to decide how to pay for these, because uh, students are paying for them through their tuition, and one-third of their tuition each year is how they're paying for them. We chose to go ahead and get a three-year lease. Dell did give us a 0% three-year lease. We pay it in October and February when we receive our tuition payments, and then there's a $1 buyout at the end of that three-year lease. And at that point, we don't want the laptops ourselves. We'll go ahead and just pay the $150 and transfer ownership at that point to our students. The cost of the laptop and the software is built into their tuition. And our students have um, a lock-in tuition. It doesn't really make much of a difference for this. But just so you know the background, if they pay $20,000 in year one, that's what they're going to pay in year two and year three. So they lock in. 
the planning and preparation timeline that first year, we started in about January, and January to March is when we chose our vendor and decided on what the kind of terms we wanted for our contract to be. April and May, we finalized those contract terms. We purchased all of our software licenses for the next year, and I would say that is the upfront cost that you have to pay for the whole three-year period. You can't just parcel that out over three years with the lease. And then also, we received the evaluation unit and built the image off of that in April and May. June, we received our first article. We determined that our image is loaded correctly on it and that everything is, is how we wanted it. And then we placed our purchase order for the remaining laptops with the image. In July, and this was a lot more detailed than you would have necessarily thought, first issue was unpacking the laptops. We wanted to make sure that all of, I mean, there was just tons of boxes and foam everywhere. Um, and we wanted to make sure that we put the same things in the same pockets that we had your floppy drive in this pocket, we had your power cable in this pocket. So at orientation, we could say, go here and find this, and then they could, and they weren't searching around or telling us, I don't have this. So that was the first thing. You know, we increased the brightness on every screen. We did all sorts of those things. And we had just a couple of people doing that unpacking so that they would have the same process each time. The other issue was we knew we would have, we have our orientation se se sessions for each section. We have six sections of law students. And we would have everyone walking around with the exact same kind of, of laptop bag, with the exact same type of laptop, and if they were going to get lost. Because right after they saw us in the computer section, they would then go up and to the library. And we were like, are they going to lug their laptops around? So we put luggage tags on each one of their um, laptops and Mercer's colors are orange and black. So we made them orange so they were easily visible and uh, put their names on those. And that kept everyone straight for them. Some of the last minute configurations we had to do, we had to add all the students to the domain. We, ended, we did each one of the students to that. We recorded their service tags as well and matched them up with the students. We recorded their MAC addresses because we register MAC addresses for our wireless network on the RADIUS server. And then we separated our laptops into the different sections for the orientation sessions. We also created Go CDs for the students. So if they are at home and they need to re-image their CD or their laptop, they can do it themselves. Um, we give them the Go CD and the instructions and they can do that. Deploying them, we had one hour orientation sessions per section. Students had to sign an agreement before they picked up the laptop, which basically said, you abide by our technology policy. We own this laptop. It's, it's leased right now. We'll transfer ownership after three years. If, if you leave, you have to return the laptop to us. And to make sure that they understood the warranty terms, because we do not cover, we don't have insurance on them. Students have to use their renter's insurance or car insurance or homeowner's insurance. Uh, to pay it in case it's, it's lost or stolen. So we did want to make sure that that was on there. And we also were very clear, while the laptop itself has a three-year warranty, batteries only have one, and that they would be responsible for replacing those batteries. And then we, of course, showed them the features of the laptops, how they connected to the network, et cetera. How we handle drops and transfer students. This was kind of a big issue that we wanted to get ironed out from the very beginning. If, if, our, if we have students who drop out after the first semester, after the first year, whatever, we, um, have them, we give them the choice. They can either pay the prorated share of the laptop of what we paid, or they can return it to us, and then we just put it into our loaner pool in case there needs to be a repair. For transfer students for next year, uh, if we have an incoming 2L, they'll receive last year's model because they'll only be paying two years' worth of tuition on it. And then if we have any incoming 3Ls this year, they will not receive a laptop because that system had not gone into place yet. And then the student, if, if, and one student did have his laptop stolen, he left it in his car and didn't lock it. And that student is responsible for repaying the law school for that laptop. How we handle service. Uh, our technicians now are Dell certified, which they tell you is $179 a year, but they'll waive it, of course, if you do these systems. And that's so you don't have to sit there on the phone forever. You can tell them if you know you need a hard drive, you go on there and you just get it yourself. Probably a number of you um, who have already done that system. If there's a software problem, we don't mess around with it too long. We'll give, we'll give it about 10, 10 minutes maybe, and at that point, we'll determine its software and we'll just re-image it. We'll save their files to the network and re-image. 
If it's a hardware problem, we just give them the spare battery and power adapter if that's what their issue is. We just keep spares of those around. If they need a hard drive, keyboard, a modem, that sort of thing. We do those sorts of repairs on house because it's just faster for us to do it. We do tend to go ahead and have the Dell technicians come out just for the motherboards, just because they take a little bit longer, and then we give the students a loaner laptop if they're laptop if they're going to be without it for a while. And if students are out of town, of course, they can call Gold Technical Support and get next day at home service if they need to do that as well. And it's no problem that the law school owns it. It's on our contract that our students themselves can call for that support. The student response, prospective students. When I do <laughs> sessions for incoming for the parents and for scholarship students and things like that every year, just overwhelmingly, they, they love this. They, the parents love that they don't have to worry about having to go out with their students and buy a laptop and know whether or not they're getting a good deal on it, whether it's what they really need for law school, whether it's going to do what they, what they want it to do, that sort of thing. Just overwhelmingly, they seem to really like it. Also, our current students, we surveyed our students after the first semester of using the laptops. They were all satisfied with their hardware configuration. Now, I will give you a caveat on that. On the survey form, I asked them specifically, was this hardware configuration sufficient for your law school needs? Um, because I didn't buy a gaming computer for them, and I didn't want to hear, you know, well, I needed, you know, this 20-inch screen, and I needed much more, a much bigger processor. So I was pretty specific on that question. And also, whether or not they were sort of satisfied with their service levels. And there are going to be some students who are probably never going to be happy, no matter how quick the turnaround is, because they've been inconvenienced by it going down in the first place. So I, I was pretty happy with those, with those responses that we had from our students the first year. Staff and faculty, we, on our Dell Premier page, our staff and faculty can purchase that same configuration for the same price that we purchased them for our students. So a lot of them have gone on and taken advantage of me, being able to make those personal purchases. In the classroom, I had presented this at a faculty meeting, and about one week later I had a professor who came in and said, can we, he said, I really want to have student, my first year students in my course class, I want to call on them because he makes them do briefs. I want to call on them, and when I call on them that day, I want to put their brief up on the screen so everyone can see it. And I was really glad that I was not a first-year student myself at that point. Um, but we went ahead and we set up a shared X drive for everybody because everyone has login scripts and has network storage when they log on to the network. So we did set up a shared drive. We have a number of faculty who now just have their students turn in their assignments on that drive if they're not graded. Um, if they're just things to be looking over, that sort of thing, they put their notes up on there and things. So that has been very popular. And our students have not been thrilled with having their things up on the screen for everyone to see, but that's all part of law school. Uh, the wireless access, because we have this, all of these computers everywhere, of course all of them have wireless cards, I have, I, I'm getting more complaints from faculty than I was before about the surfing in the classroom. Um, but of course, my, my feeling about that is, well, they were going to have a laptop anyway that they were going to be surfing on, even if we provided it. So that has, those, those complaints have gone up with everyone having the laptops. Legal research, research courses love it because they don't have to come up, they don't have to bring everybody up to the computer lab anymore to do sessions. They don't have to worry whether or not people have their laptops or not. Um, everyone's got it, everyone's got one with the same configuration. Our response from the IT department, um, last year we ordered D600s for our students, and our whole batch had problems with batteries and with the power adapters. And, I mean, every day there was like 10 of these little boxes going back and forth with all of the, the batteries and the power adapters, and that was just our bad luck that year. Um, so I'm hoping next year with our D610s we won't have those issues. Also, the second year of the contract process I thought was much more difficult than I expected it to be. I planned on the first year of there being a lot of back and forth. And the first year, frankly, there were things that surprised me about it. Um, Dell seemed very, very surprised that I wanted a contract. Um, and I could not understand that, how they would, how they would handle giving $217,000 worth of computers to people without wanting a contract. And I said, you know, this is a law school, we're going to have to have so they finally um, worked through that, 
this year, I thought we started in January last year, and it was probably March and April when we were finalizing everything. I'd start in March and April this year. Um, that did not work that way. Our whole, the whole staff at Dell changed. We had a new sales rep. We had a new technical rep. We had new imaging staff to deal with. We had a new premier um, page staff to deal with as well. And they were... They couldn't understand my contract. I just need a different quote, and literally, I want everything to stay the same except for my hard work quote. And so, I, it just has taken much longer than I would have anticipated. And after speaking with several people there, I think that next year I'm just going to go ahead and start in January once again, just to make sure everything is done. It's a little tricky because you want to get a certain discount on the laptop, and the longer you wait to lock in the terms, the better they're going, the better rate they're going to give you because they have to try to foresee how much that laptop's going to be worth when they actually send it to you in July. And so I was trying to make that time a little shorter between it, and that didn't work so effectively. Um, right now, we still haven't received our first article yet. Um, we've sent the image to them. Still haven't received that, though, yet. And that's a concern for me, because I want to make sure that the laptops are correct with the right image when they come in in July. And I need them in July. So. Even if you think that you, you've got the process down pat, you really don't, because when you're working with a big corporation, which everyone's department is someone different, and especially with the leasing department, which is completely different from, Cell, from Dell, it's Dell Financial Services, you have, to, you have to work with a number of different people. So otherwise, though, I would say that we have been very um, happy with the process, and we are going to continue it. Um, it every time in the near future. It's made a big difference in our lives. Sorry, I keep doing that um, from the IT perspective. So does anyone have any questions about how Mercer did this? Yeah, in the back. What, what is the, the true cost of the laptop? Uh, the true cost that we paid, and the way I work with it, is I always want about a $600 discount. Our students pay $1,450 for the laptops. Yes? How did you deal with 2L? Did you buy a lump sum predicting that? <coughs> If two L's wanted to purchase them this year, they went to the Premier page and could purchase it from them. And I, I did not work with that transaction at all. It was them and Dell directly. Now, they couldn't get our software deals because we weren't purchasing the software for them, but they could get that hardware configuration. Yeah, Mark? Do you allow other users to bring in other laptops? They can bring in whatever they want, but I'm not going to service them. Um, and that's only for our first years. Our second years and third years we'll still work with. But uh, that's what we tell them from the get-go. If, if you want our service, you're going to have to use this, this what system. Question, can they, can, are there restrictions on what they can load themselves on that laptop? We don't make any restrictions whatsoever about that. Now, we, of course, have had issues with this. It makes it a little trickier when students download movies illegally on the network because it's now, it's now on the law school's laptop that they're doing this. Mm -hmm. And it puts them at much greater risk than it ever did before. Um, and we are very clear with them at the beginning. We're having you signed by this technology, techno technology policy. You've read it. And if you're doing anything like that, here are the implications of it. And there have been a couple that ha we have been able. It's easy to catch them now because we have their MAC address. We've got their username. So, yeah, Mickey? Now, in case where, you know, for some reason, say a hard drive fails or something like that, or you need an app for a laptop, you're just re-imaging it back to the status that Exactly, back to the original so configuration. Backups and taking care of their own data. That's right, and they, and they all have their CD rewriters, and then they all have access to the network to back up. Do you do anything as far as backing up their data? I do not do anything. That is their personal responsibility. Yeah. Uh, how's the workload changed for your technicians that are doing the support? Is it, did it really drop down, or? I would not say it dropped. I'd say it stayed. Um, it, stayed, it became different. We were no longer having all of these personal laptops in there that we were trying to work with. Um, the in and out time was very quick now. And so we, we do have more students probably who depend on us for service now. However, we can provide that service so much more effectively that I think everyone is much happier and we're much happier not keeping track of everyone's laptops and the problems that they have with them. Is the one reason you can do it quicker if you keep the supplies parts? We do keep it some parts because we have those loaners that we have, and so we can just use those for parts if we need to for a very quick turnaround. And of course, we get the parts in 24 hours otherwise if we don't have them. Yeah. 
can students opt out of the laptop program? No, they cannot opt out. Um, it's part of their tuition, and uh, even if they have a laptop, we, we let them know it's on our website, and they know, they usually know about a year in advance as soon as they apply, you will be getting a laptop when you come in. And that was our biggest concern, to be quite frank, when we started this, because we thought we're going to have a lot of students who say they do not want to be involved with this. And I just haven't heard any complaints, and I'm not sure why that is, because that was our biggest concern with doing it, and we're just not hearing those complaints. Our Apple users complained anyway because, <laughs> because we didn't provide support for the Apples before. And we do we are a Windows shop. So yeah. I mean, for like the two that are purchasing their laptops on their own, mm -hmm. um, are they directed to the Apple store or are they directed to the No, they do not have the same sort of leasing agreement, nor do they have the software. Okay. They only have the hardware configuration that we could, that they can purchase for the same price that we paid. So it's not pre-image with your image? No, because we can't purchase their personal software. We're leasing the other laptops, okay. so they're the law schools. Yeah. yeah. Two, number one, why did you choose to lease instead of buy? Mm -hmm. uh, and if they do show proof to you that they have the licenses for the software, will you then put your image on it? Um, okay, the first issue is leasing instead of buying. We leased just because of budget reasons. We did not have the upfront money in our budget to spend the two hundred and seventeen thousand okay. dollars upfront. So that's why we leased. Um, as far as what was your second question? I'm sorry. Uh, if they have purchased all the software, on the 2L or 3L mm -hmm. purchased all the mm -hmm. software, mm -hmm. um, will you then image their machine for them? We have not done that. We have not had anyone request that we do that. Um, we do have special academic licensing, of course, for our software that we've purchased in volumes. I, I would be reluctant to do it. Well, of course, given the Norton antivirus, because we have a site license for mm -hmm. that. Um, a lot of students aren't going to buy Corel Word Perfect Suite. Um, they're just going to buy office, and our image has the Corel Word Perfect Suite. So I don't know how often that's going to come up. We have not had anyone request it yet. Yeah. A quick follow up against that. Microsoft won't let you do that. Um, if you buy the site license or the academic site license, that's not the same product that they would buy, even if they buy the academic box product. Oh. The different license, and Microsoft will mail you on it. So hey, we've avoided problems. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can put this in, in the right words. Mm -hmm. Before you did this, did you have any issues with buying equipment through law school funds and then giving that equipment to somebody else? I mean, how did you get across the fact that you're transferring property from the university to a private person? As far as at the end of the three-year term? We were told that that would not be any issue from Dell's perspective. Um, and yeah, I'm more concerned about from the university. The university did not care because they were three years old and we didn't want them anymore. I can, if okay. we, um, from our legal counsel, the laptops actually go back to the vendor and then the student buys out the lease from the vendor. And I will say that so when they... So therefore, we yeah. were kind of done with it. So. And when they transfer, when we transfer ownership, we'll have to go on Dell's website to transfer the ownership of each laptop. But didn't you say you paid the hundred and fifty dollars to the university? The universe, our our law school will choose to do that. Right, do a dollar for a laptop. Right, we do not. You do not. Okay. Well, students would have to buy it out if they wish to. Yeah. yeah. Can you say what the cost of the lease was? It was a zero percent lease, and then we spent for fourteen fifty per machine. Per year, it's two hundred seventeen thousand five hundred. Yeah. Well, I mean, because it's only the one dollar at the end, so really you're purchasing it over a three-year period. Because you only pay a buck for the buyout. How is it cheaper than just buying it front? Why would they make it cheaper than just a straight buyout? Oh, because you're paying yearly. Exactly. One shot. Right. I'm sorry for being so dense. No. You have to come up as an institution to come up with two hundred seventeen thousand. Well, I guess the first year we had to come up with one third of that. So, Arcee, forgive me for coming in late. We didn't cover this early on. Um, on the setup orientation side, 
are you, are you going through, are there any details that they have to see, or these boxes are totally configured for your environment when you hand them to them? They are totally configured for the environment when we hand it to them. What, what if anything, do you go through at, at, in terms of an orientation? One thing that we do is we register their exam soft software for, uh, during the orientation. We go through how to save to the network. We go through the printing and P counter and all and, of that. Uh, are you doing that at the front of a room uh, with on screen showing them? Is that, right. Are you having them go follow along with you on your own computer? Exactly. Yeah. And what media are you using for documentation? Paper or are you giving them online stuff or CDs? Uh, we're not really doing much in the way of documentation. Uh, we have just the website and things on there. And um, we want this year to be having more sessions after this, um, after that first initial session. I think that they're so overloaded during law school orientation anyway that if we did it for much longer periods of time, they would forget most of it anyway. So we're going to have more targeted training sessions later in the year this year is our plan. Yeah. You said you put exams, or you register their exams up now. Are you requiring your students to take the final using exam software, or are you giving them the opt out to take a written exam instead? Our students can always opt out if they want to take a written exam. We go ahead and sign them up so with exam software. You just register them once a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just curious, how many machines is in that lease program that you're offering your students? How many? Well, we have. Well, we're, we're, getting a, we're getting 155 per year because we'll, we'll purchase the 150 for our students and then the law school purchases another five so we can have loaners. Yeah, we'll go ahead and switch now to Gene and he can talk about how it went at the University of Minnesota. And of course, if you have more questions at the end, just let me know. Yep. Both of us. It'll be eerily similar but different. No, I love this program. <laughs> it's made a huge difference in our lives, I think, and I think we, we do a much better job than we ever did before. And the virus reasons alone. How about spyware? What do you do for spyware? We have not done anything yet. We've talked about going ahead and putting, um, we've been kind of waiting for Microsoft's product to come out of beta. So we'll see how that goes when that happens. Um, I'll actually probably speed through a, a lot of this since there are enough similarities with, with Darcy's programs. Um, once again, you know, why a laptop program? We're going to talk about bidding and negotiating that contract. Um, our chosen model, the setup and deployment, how we're handling repairs and insurance, students drops and transfers, um, service. Boy, we had a lot, a lot of problems with virus. We also got hit by blaster. Um, the students had for many years wanted um, service from our um, our support people, and we didn't because of the wide variety of student laptop models. We have uh, 280 students roughly per class, and international and uh, joint degree, and kind of other students. So our po student population is about 950, and they, we couldn't support them. So we would they would spend the computer support people spend five or ten minutes. If they could do something quick, they would. Otherwise, you know, pretty much on their own. Um, and 90% of our students already had a laptop. So we wanted to be able to support them in electronic exams and actually do a, a you know, cradle to grave kind of support for them. And the only way to really do that was with a standardized laptop. And all of the deans agreed that that was kind of the way to go. Um, and plus, you know, there is an interest and future potential in, in other kind of classroom technologies. And once um, students have um, a particular type of, of laptop, you have that additional um, ability to, to control and install and, and decide um, and test um, particular deployments. So that was, you know, so for the future we, we thought that would be a good idea to, to go along with that. Um, our committees was me, and I was mainly the pr uh, program manager. I didn't do much more than write the RFP and, and coordinate everyone's schedule. Our manager of computer support, our student services coordinator, our director of technology who really pushed a lot of this. Um, we actually had three students on our committee, one 1L and two 2Ls. And then because we are a public university, um, we had the community relations group because this was going to be um, over a quarter of a million dollars, which means that our vendor had to give something back into the community in order to be chosen. And, uh, and then, of course, the purchasing group, which handles all um, large bulk purchasing. Um, it took us about five months 
um, a little bit longer than anticipated. Um, you know, the RFP is, um, was a, a, a big pain. We had a couple of models from which to work at because our business school and one of our coordinate campuses um, were also doing laptop programs, so I could use them at least somewhat as models. Um, we invited three vendors um, back, and then uh, for presentations that went into contract negotiations. We ended up having to rush things literally to the Board of Regents for approval because our um, legal counsel, the only person who I, I discovered at the University of Minnesota, which is a really large institution, um, who handles these kind of agreements, was going to be out for a week or on vacation for three and a half weeks. And even though I contacted him a month and a half or two months before his vacation about his backup, he never managed to get back to me. So we were rushing through final terms and agreements at, at the last moment before we had to present to the board. Um, got our order placed, and then we rolled it out. Um, we got proposals from six uh, vendors, Dell, Gateway, uh, HP, IBM, Reason, which is a, a local um, manufacturer, and Sony. And we did invite in for presentations Dell, IBM, and, and Reason. Um, our evaluation criteria, of course, you know, the tech specs, which you'd expect, but also durability, weight, um, the price. Um, financial and business stability and was very important concerns for us because, you know, Gateway was undergoing problems about that time. Um, you know, you had heard, we had heard, you know, Sony may or may not be doing laptops anymore, so things like that. Um, you know, warranty repairs, turnaround times. Um, training and rollout assistance was very important to us. And then, of course, we had that added, like I said, little thing on community benefit and relations that we had to consider. Um, we went with the IBM uh, T41. Um, the three vendors were not terribly far apart. Um, the university was going to have a numerical rating system I had to devise for it. Um, but based on the number of points, they came out as, as the winner. This is the uh, configuration we went with. Um, what was important to us, actually, um, after testing between like the IBM and the, the Dells, the IBM had a slightly more rigid front cover. And uh, so you could actually drop books on it. and it was less likely to break the LCD monitor, and so that actually ended up being a fairly important consideration for our students. Uh, that and the latch, because they, most of our students, even though we gave them a bag, we know eventually they're going to end up throwing them into their backpack. Um, it's much harder to jam a pencil or a pen, actually, in this section with the IBM than it was with the Dell, we felt, and so that ended up being a consideration, too. Uh, at least rather than bought, Due to financial reasons, we could spread the payments out over, to the students over three years, and we didn't have really any upfront <coughs> costs because we don't have money for that either, uh, especially not buying 280 of them. Wait, is that a seller on? No. Oh. Cent Centrino. Oh, okay. Yeah, so whatever the penny, the now penny amount, so whatever. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, and this upcoming year, um, we. Um, opted to continue to go with IBM. The way our contract and, and bid award process um, works is that uh, it's a one-year contract It's a one -year contract for the three-year lease. We have the option on the same terms to renew it for two more years, um, which gave us an out if after two or three months we were unhappy, we could restart the bid process that following January. So we did continue to go with them for um, one more year. We will have to start the bid process again um, the next January. There's, our university has requirements that you can't, basically three to four years is the maximum we can award contracts. Because otherwise the vendors get upset. Are you concerned about the fact that IBM sold out their laptops to the Chinese companies? Um, it was of some concern to us, not enough this year. So, you know, ask me that in nine months. <laughs> um, from our student survey, um, and actually I, didn't, I don't have a slide for it, but they wanted a larger hard drive, um, was one of the comments that came back, and they wanted the SXGA, so the higher resolution on the screen. So those are the two things we did, and it's a standard now to go with the um, faster processor. We had a 93% satisfied or very satisfied um, response on our program. Our survey was actually administered by the students themselves, by their student group. Um, we had some input as to what questions we wanted asked, but they really did all of that and provided the feedback back to us, so um, so we weren't seen as having you know influence into the survey. Um, you know, this is kind of our process. We developed the image in early June. It's pretty much the same process that Darcy went through. We gave the image to the vendor, 
got back the initial one, tested it, got the rest back, um, you know, map everything to the students, orient it, and, and we do it in three groups. Um, we had about three FTEs, um, including some of the vendor assistant and student help, over about four plus weeks to handle our assembly line process. The area was a mess with boxes and foam everywhere. <laughs> so um, we also insisted on, on pre-imaging because there's just uh, no easy way to handle that many things otherwise. And then there were about two to three hour orientation, eh, probably about more like two. Um, and the only documentation to answer Tim's question that we that they actually got was a little bit of paper. And it's covering network. It's network and printing. I mean, pretty much about the only things that are covered. Anything else is kind of um, not what they're going to remember. Um, and we did have a vendor present to answer questions. They had a table also set out kind of during the entire 3D orientation period so students could stop by and ask additional questions. Um, they also gave them like flash drives and other little trinkets or whatever. Um, this year we're um, adding another full year FTE now into the uh, student support area to handle the fact that we're having two L's coming up. Um, repairs, we, we provide complete service. So if they bring something in, they, it gets repaired immediately. Um, if we can't do it immediately, they get a loaner. And then same type of thing, 24-hour um, service. They'll bring, uh, IBM will send someone out to actually work on motherboards, that kind of stuff. Um, if we have to do a full recovery, we'll just wipe it and, and re-image it. A lot of the students are, are loading their own software on there, so we actually spend more than 10 or 15 minutes. We'll spend a few hours actually trying to save their laptop before we make the decision to actually wipe it. Um, and we do plan on setting up a warranty repair center so that they'll do everything and then IBM pays you or Dell will pay you then in that case um, for the actual repairs that you end up doing that are chargeable. Um, insurance stuff damage, the suits are responsible. Once again, we make them sign something um, to abide by university technology um, rules and personal property insurance is recommended. They um, are, they do, we are self-insured for theft, and the laptops are strictly university property, so, um, there, but there's a $500 deductible, and they are responsible for that. If it's, um, if it's theft due to complete negligence, then we actually do make them pay everything. If it's, you know, if they left it out in the library for an hour and a half or something, um, you know, we're an urban campus. We have a lot of walk-through traffic, and so you, you know, we have signs posted everywhere. Don't do that. You know, um, accidental damage policy, coffee and keyboard. They are responsible for that too. Um, you know, once again, if it's something we can do quickly and easily, we'll do it. If it's something that's a complete short and, and break, they are responsible for those repairs. Um, People who are dropping, they turn in the laptop. It's actually our option whether we're going to turn it back in then to IBM um, or whether we're going to keep it as a loaner. We're keeping them mainly as loaners um, to give to our transfer students. Um, refunds are per university policy, which means if they drop after a certain amount of, of uh, weeks, then they get nothing back for that term. If it's before that, then they get everything back. So it's kind of an all or nothing kind of deal. We don't charge through tuition. We charge through our technology fee. The University of Minnesota has tuition and it has fees, so, um, and I'm, there's not a great deal of difference, except it's a little bit easier to raise fees than tuitions. Um, transfers get issued, usually the extra loaners um, that we have, that's, that's how we've handled it, um, or one of the returned laptops. And buyouts are not allowed, except at the, technically they are allowed, once again, we've decided not to allow it, except at the end of the lease, at the three years. Um, and our buyout is slightly more expensive than theirs. Um, issues. We have act, um, unfortunately had a fair number of wireless networking issues, and it's an unhappy combination of the chips that in the IBM internal wireless cards in our mixed WAP environment. And so, um, one of the things that we are doing is um, moving to um, 802.11a access points, which seems to be solving a lot of our, our problems because we have um, we have too many students and not enough access points. And the BGs are really only handling, oh, I'd say between 40 and 50 connections, and the A's will handle 100. So um, we also have the issue that we ordered laptops with both touch pads and the little erasers, and uh, they came with only touch pads. So IBM you know, replaced them all for free, basically, or added it all for free. Um, otherwise, everything else has been remarkably smooth. The students have been happy. Um, we've been happy. In fact, everyone's kind of surprised there haven't been more problems. 
Um, in the future, I've been evaluating various classroom software such as Silicon Chalk and um, any and other types of polling software. But we have so many network issues that um, it's just uh, with the wireless that, that that can't work. Too much bandwidth um, for right now. We're also looking at whether we're going to do some um, e-books. And we'll, we'll eventually hire one more support person because we're going to have a 3L class coming on, too. So, I don't know if you have any questions. So, if either of you guys have to uh, return to the cross and just say return, is there yep. a fee for returning the lease before the year, the three years are up? For us, we just pay whatever that, it, it's up through that last payment, and then and then we return it. We don't pay any more. We don't get any refunds, right, up to, you know, up to that point. So, um, we, I think we pay also in October and February. So if if we have to return it, you know, in um, you know June, we're not going to get any any of that February payment back. But then we won't pay again in October for it. I can say we're not returning any of ours at this point. We've kept yeah. them all for longer, for owners, and we've yeah. needed them. And we also keep them for our faculty pool of laptops that we check out. So we have not done that yet. Yeah. For either of you, how does this differ? The faculty can do whatever they want, except for no Macs. So, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, they can buy into certain deals that, that they have. But our, our faculty have um, a greater range of of needs, and um, and so we allow them a great deal of uh, greater latitude. Thank you. No, we do not. And our, we do not purchase laptops for our faculty. They all get desktops, and we have ones that we just check out to them. But we're a Dell shop, and we only buy Dells. There's also an argument if you really want to prepare them for the practice of law, they're, they're going to have to know how to use these sorts of tools. Yeah, we've, we have always also given all of our students actually a certain amount of financial aid to buy computers. And so that just gets, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't defer the entire cost of, of the computer or the entire career, but that just gets rolled into this now. Um, so the impact is, is a little bit less because they were all, almost everyone, 90% plus were buying something anyway or getting or bringing in something anyway. Um, so, I mean, we now they don't have to pay every time yeah. they want to get it repaired because chances are they've gone to Best Buy or Circuit City and purchased yeah. a 90 day warranty or a one year warranty and now they don't have to deal with that sort of thing either. So it's not only just the financial cost, but it's the cost kind of psychologically of constantly yeah. dealing with a laptop that's broken down that they don't have to deal with anymore. Um, no, actually, we are not right now. But we we do have a, a um, corporate edition of Norton Antivirus, which puts uh, pushes those out. Right now, we are asking. We load um, uh, one of the you know I can't remember which free which one of the free spyware detectors we put on there. Um, so we actually. Ask them to, to run that. If the any time a uh, laptop comes into uh, the laptop center, we automatically kind of do all of that anyway um, for them. But otherwise, you know, we're not we're not uh, well except for the antivirus through the um, through our scheduled updates because we have everything configured for them. That's the only thing we're actually pushing out to them, uh, or excuse me, that we have scheduled for them directly. That and the Windows uh, security updates. Everything is actually. Uh, pre-scheduled, so unless they know how to go in and, and change that themselves, it's um, that's going to happen. 
We have not pushed yeah. out any sort of patch management yet. Um, I have been in talks with, with vendors, and we hope to do that here pretty soon, and we will definitely do that for yeah. our student loan Yeah, we're looking at it yeah. like next year. Yeah. yeah. Um. I have a question about this. this it sounds yep. you're about the same size as I am. Mm -hmm. You have basically one full-time this, this per class? Yeah, this last year we actually had one and a quarter actually, because a quarter of a, one of those person's job was to help out, and plus, I would actually see like a half FTE of student help, so maybe one and three quarters, and so, and then we're adding additional full-time staff um, to help out, and the student uh, help will be consistent at probably a half to three quarters time. One thing so, that we did to try to combat that, because we still, we're a three-person staff now, um, and we have one person who is in charge of the classrooms and in charge of student computing. So what we have done is we have our student assistants, they can now, they now know we have a flow chart for them of when they need to go ahead and re-image the computer and what to do to do that. And then we also have, um, they take care of the batteries and the power adapters. And as silly as that sounds, I mean, that's just nonsense that you're just constantly dealing with that you don't need to have, you know, high technical skills to, to deal with. And getting rid of those things has saved a lot of time. And so we just have student assistants who do that. Have you put uh, less resources to your on-site computer labs now? Yes. How, how has that affected that? Have you come back? Have you actually taken computers off-site? Yes, we have. Yeah, we had 30 in the lab last year and we went down to 18 this year. And and we just added more laptop connections and we, we've never had a problem with going with running out of computers for people. We cut the number of units down by about a third. Way in the back. I, I think what you're doing is really creative, and um, I lot and I'm <laughs> jealous that we we'll must for ourselves do it as much as it takes a lot of work on, on your part to do this. A minor level of advocate. Part of me worries that uh, we might be insulating law students from the reality of day to day management of these these tools we call like, you know, a laptop. Right. And, but they then hit the real world. <laughs> Well, they do have to learn that they've got to do backups because <laughs> I mean, there's always so much data recovery that, that you can do, you know, that you can do. And, and same thing with spyware and viruses. I mean, they are, even though we are hand-holding them, it's also a, a user education process, at least on the software side. On the hardware side, I mean, how many, how many real people out there actually, you know, install memory, swap out drives and things like that besides us, so. And I can say, I felt that we insulated them before anyway. Yeah. Because we took care of their problems when they came in. And of course, it doesn't stop the, the lecture when they come in. And, or what happens is they don't tell me that they have a problem with their laptop and they come in to take an exam on it. And I walk in and they say, oh, yeah, the software is not working. So I go to download the patch. Oh, yeah, my network card's not working. And then I go to use the mouse. And they're like, yeah, you have to use the external mouse. And I'm like, why didn't you bring this in to us? You know, we, can't, we cannot help you two minutes before this exam starts. You needed to bring this in to us yesterday, and we could have helped you. Um, so I, I understand your concern, certainly. But I felt that we were, we were insulating them anyway. And... For the most part, they still get the lectures when I walk in and I see bear share all over their, their laptops and, and all of that. I'm like, it's not going to work, and the result is we're going to re-image it now. So I think that they do learn kind of the harder lessons by having us mm -hmm. just go and re-image now instead of sitting there for a few days doing everything we can to get bear share to work correctly for them. So. Oh, uh, in regards to your Dell certification, are you... Is the whole university, your shop, certified? So if one of your technicians leaves, mm -hmm. you're still okay to repair them? Or how does that work? It has not been an issue yet. I did ask, i just been asking for three a year, and they put it in someone's name. But they'll work with me if, okay. if somebody leaves and we'll just get somebody you, else. Like CDs or manuals or anything like that too? Um, no, you know, you just do it online, and it's you don't have to be all that great with it to get their certification. So, um, warranty direct, warranty parts direct program is different than the uh, what you were talking, was talking about. How like you all are part of the tier one uh, support group, which is, which you pay an annual fee on top of other things. But yeah. it do the university runs 
a tier one support group, so we only do the warranty part stuff on our own home computers, uh, student computers. You put these machines on a domain, you say? Mm -hmm. Um, so are, are all these, are all students local administrators then on their own machine? Yes, they are. Okay. On ours, so are they on yours? I have to think for a moment on that. I, I don't actually set up the network stuff okay. at all, so I'm not sure I can, I can actually answer that. My guess is they probably are. Yeah. yeah. Well, we both would like to thank you very much for coming and... and